In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to fix audio interference in your home studio setup. When setting up your home studio, buying the most expensive audio equipment is not going to equal to getting the best sound. You have to also factor in how you are going to set up that equipment. Is the audio equipment and gear right for your situation and context. I mean, in most cases, you could buy really good equipment, plug it in, and it's good to go right out of the box. But in some cases, you have to know what you're doing, and it requires a little bit of upfront work. In my situation, I purchased the Rodecaster Pro, the Shure SM7B, the Dynamite inline preamp, because this mic is very, very gain hungry, and I purchased a decent set of balance cables from Amazon, which were highly rated and people were raving about them. Once I plugged in the Shure SM7B into the Rodecaster Pro via the inline preamp, the Dynamite, I started to get a lot of radios, frequency interference, which was quite annoying because I'm like, I spent so much money buying all this equipment and I'm getting all of this weird sound. It sounds something like this. Ugh. Can't tell you how annoyed and frustrated I was after spending all that money and getting that annoying radio frequency interference. Once I had done the sulking, I took matters into my own hands. I started to look at YouTube videos to find a solution. Also read reviews on Reddit. The solutions mentioned by people online were pretty helpful in the beginning. The first set of things that people recommended were number one, Unplug the Rodecaster Pro, take it to a different location, plug in the equipment one by one and see where the interference is coming from. So I literally took the Rodecaster Pro from my setup in this room here and took it to the bedroom, plugged in all the cables and realized the interference was still as strong. So after some careful testing and examination, I realized that there might be an issue with my cables, which were the cheap kinds. So I invested some money into the Mogami cables, which come with the Nutrik adapters. So the Mogami cables were able to eliminate 80% of that electromagnetic interference and RFI, radio frequency interference. The challenge with my apartment studio is that I am facing the street and on the street, there are power lines for the streetcar. There are also a lot of Wi-Fi routers. There's also a sign hanging off the side of my building. So inherently, there's a lot of interference that's coming into my audio signal, which I cannot control. I cannot switch it off in my apartment, which would be kind of odd if I was able to switch off the streetcar from a switch in my apartment. With the 20% interference sound left, I was the Ben Affleck sad. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. The next phase, I carefully routed all the audio cables that are going from the mic to my Rodecaster Pro away from any electrical wires, trying to minimize and reduce any form of physical proximity I could. I still had 20% interference left. Now, typically people say that when it comes to cheap versus expensive cables, cables don't add any color to the sound, but an expensive and premium quality cable will give you clean sound, which I would say is better sound quality. So in a way, premium cables do give you better sound because you don't get any interference, which is why I'm a little bit surprised that most people are recommending just buy any cable. Cables don't add any color to the sound. Well, interference is technically not color, but it is very annoying and it does affect the sound quality, quote unquote. So I just shut everything down and I was like, you know what, let me look at this with fresh eyes in a couple of days. It was pretty annoying having all this great equipment, but getting that audio interference. Luckily, a few days later, I was browsing the Shure website and I discovered Shure A15RFI filter. I actually got four of these babies so all you have to do is you have to take this RF filter and put it in your audio chain. All that basically means is from the Shure SM7B, the signal goes straight into the RFI filter, which feeds into the Dynamite inline preamp, which then feeds into the Rodecaster Pro. And boom, now I have crisp, clean audio going directly from my mouth into digital format. And I'm surprised by the way that nobody's made a video about these RF filters, which 
are so good. They eliminate any radio frequencies, even in the cheaper cables that I have. They're really good. I highly recommend them. Also, I'm not affiliated by any of the products that I've mentioned. I've purchased all of these with my own money. And these filters, the A15RFs, I discovered sort of serendipitously. So let's summarize. Number one, if you buy expensive equipment, that does not equal to great sound. Well, you have to also factor in how you are connecting the different pieces of equipment together. And I highly recommend investing in a good set of cables. Now I got the Mogami cables, the Mogami gold studio cables with the Nutric adapters. Second, you wanna make sure that the audio cables are away, physically distant from any electrical wiring. And then thirdly, if you are in a predicament like mine, where you live in an apartment where there's just a lot of interference coming from externally from the environment, then you can tack on this Shure A15 RF filter. It will filter out any radio frequency in your audio signal, giving you a clean output. So there you have it, folks. Hopefully you learned something and I was able to help you resolve your audio interference issues please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if there are other products out there or other solutions that you have tried that have helped you resolve audio interference in your home studio setup. Bonus tip. A lot of people connect the Shure SM7B directly to the Rodecaster Pro. I have tried that. You have to then boost the gain on the Rodecaster Pro because this mic needs a lot of gain. But with the Dynamite, and I have tried the cloud lifter as well, but I prefer the dynamite. With the dynamite, you are able to get a clean output sent directly to the Rodecaster Pro. And finally, the sequence in which you connect these different devices. And that is all for this video.